Joe Rebello with Rebello's Campbell Karate, and welcome to our new show for our new year. And now we're going to today's episode. We're going to be talking a little bit about utilizing some of the apparatus that you, as a martial artist, will have in your studio, or you could use here at Rebello's Campbell Karate. Today we're going to talk about a very important issue regarding many of the self-standing bags. Now, in this case, we have a Century's Powerline bag. And uh, I picked this up from another martial arts studio, and they had a problem with this particular bag. And again, it's not a major problem, not by any stretch of imagination, and can be easily be remedied. Let's talk about it. And the problem is, is that after a while, uh, this has a series of grommets or lines here. It might be a little difficult to see. Oh, see, and there is the problem. The entire bag moves. What's supposed to happen is, I'm gonna move this, this is gonna help us out in a moment, is that traditionally, the bottom of the bag has a hole. And in this hole, there's a small plastic nub. So again, a little semicircular nub that is somewhat more pronounced than others on the side of the bag. And it's designed to hold that particular bag at the various heights placed on this zigzag lifting bar, or lifting groove, I should say. Well, what happens after a while, if you're a martial artist and you're punching and kicking and smacking this thing around, apparently what happens is after a while that groove starts to wear down more and more until it becomes nothing more than a nub and it doesn't hold the bag in place, either at its given height or in place in regards to the bag assembly itself. So what happens is you start to get a bag that simply stated starts moving back and forth and won't stay at this height. So obviously, you've got to wonder to yourself, well, Mr. Rebello, how come you can have that bag stay at that height? Well, I found a simple alternative to it. Stuff it. Just kidding. What we're going to do is we're going to stuff it with mattress padding. And again, simple upholstery foam. And you can get this at any of your upholsteries or local craft stores. It's a soft, smooshy foam rubber. That simple. Now, you can see in this case, the height's still a little bit short for me. I'm six feet tall. If I want this to be at my height at six feet, well, all I have to do, literally, is pull the bag off the assembly, turn it over, take my foam. It doesn't have to be perfectly round either. Simply fold it, stuff it into the bag opening, take it, pick it back up, and, and sometimes the nubs will be there, so you have to line it up with the nubs and slide down accordingly. Looks pretty close to me, doesn't it to you? So here we go. Now I've got my bag all set. Now, you may say to yourself, well, okay, so now I've got my height. I like the bag rotating back and forth. Why? Let's show you. Here is from Asia World of Martial Arts, the Pro Force Strong Arm. Now, I really love this device because, especially as a Kempo practitioner, and of course, uh, here at Rebels Kempo Karate, we teach several different martial arts, but the key ingredient is, is that I can do many of the drills that I have to use with an arm, obviously, because my opponent's gonna punch me with an arm or a leg or what have you. So I wanna make sure that I have an armature where I can practice my techniques on said arm and said body. So now, I move around here, and I take the straps of the front arm, wrap them around accordingly, and say so he disappeared for a moment. Okay, I'll bring it this way. Does that make it better for you? Sure, makes it better for me. I'm gonna pull it tight, strap it across the bag, take the bottom strap, Strap it in the grommet accordingly. I'm still here, not on the edge. And there we go. Well, guess what? That arm's movable now. Now, again, it's not perfect at first. Let me move this down a little bit. I want to have enough room for a face to place my fist. And now I can practice my drills. Now, uh, I'm just gonna move this other bag out of the way for a moment. And now I can work with my bat. So now, here, I can block and strike. Hey, the arm moved. Well, let's move it back. Let's move it this way. Let's move it this way. Let's move it here. Let's move it here. Let's hook it and strike here. Let's hook it and strike low. 
Let's go into my Wing Chun drill. Tang Sao, Wong Sao, Yak Kun. Tang Sao, Wong Sao, Wong Sao, Tang Sao, Yak Kun. Wong Sao, Tang Sao, Yak Kun. Okay, so now let's go on through some of our basic drills so we can detail out exactly what's happening. Uh, let's take one drill first of all. We talked about Wing Chun. Tang Sao, I'm oh, sorry, Wong Sao, I should say. Tang Sao, Yak Kun. Bridge hand, palm up hand, vertical punch. Some people will call this straight blast. Some people will call it the sun fist. Some people will call it the standing punch. I don't care what you call it as long as it effectively works. But again, it gives you an influence on the different styles. So again, I'm working here, moving off the line, moving the arm, opening and closing the center line of the body, and then executing a vertical punch. And the arm moves. Hey, I could block and utilize my other hand as well. Same basic drill, but now my free hand is striking. Another great drill I can do from the Filipino martial arts is the classic brush hold strike. I step with my front hand, my front foot, I step with my front foot, not my front hand, and move my front hand to brush inward. I then take my second hand and grab outward and then strike with a back fist to my opponent's face. Now, I can just as easily circle his hand around, push the arm out of the way, hold, and then strike. Again, circling the hand underneath, brush hold, strike. And the armature moves. Isn't that just great? Now I can also, of course, move my body and put my footwork with this. In American Kempo, we have a basic phrase, lead foot, lead hand when moving forward. So as I move forward, I take my lead foot with my lead hand, brush, then hold, and execute my back fist. Then I can bring my feet together, taking my free hand, again, my lead foot, lead hand, as I move forward, pushing the arm out of the way, holding, and then hitting with my back fist. That's the beauty of the drill. So now, left side, right side. Left side, right side. Left side, right side. Great! And the arm moves. Hey, what if I want to do another drill that we use from the Filipino martial arts called hubud lubud. And most people use the term hubud, meaning to tie. Before, I had you move lead foot, lead hand, right? Stepping in. Now I'm going to take my, I'm going to break a law. I'm going to take my lead foot, step forward, and my back hand's going to pick up. So now I'm going to take my back hand, what's called a waiter's hand check. Some people call it a hooking parry. Some people call it a shelf. But in either case, these actions are palm up. I'm going to take my other hand and I'm going to push in with my pressing palm and an inward heel palm parry and I'm going to execute a vertical sun fist. Again, standing fist, straight blast, yak kun, yeah, we know. Now, if I want to move this arm, I bring my feet together and I use like this hooking parry and move the hand out of the way, then step in, push with my other hand and punch. Hook, parry, 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 punch. And guess what? That arm moves thanks to that wonderful foam rubber stuffed up into that bag according to my height. Yeah, I know. It's still, you know, I could put a little more stuffing in that. Okay, fine. But I, I, you get the basic idea. You adjust it to your height by how much you want to put into it or not. That's the key. Of course, will some of that eventually grind down some of that foam? Of course it will. But guess what? At that point, you replace it. It's not going to happen like next week. You can practice a lot with this. Work with this. Now, another drill we can do, we can use a lot, as a, a lot of our traditional Okinawan Japanese uh, karate and Okinawa and uh, Hawaiian Kenpo. Knife hand block, half moon in. Knife hand block, half moon in. Hook it, knife hand block, half moon in. Hook it, knife hand block, half moon in. Hook it, knife hand block, half moon in. I can work all these wonderful drills. I can hook from here, heel palm above and below. Hook, double heel palm. Hook, double heel palm. Hook, double heel palm. Hook, double heel palm. Some styles will call this the butterfly palms. Other styles will call this the heaven and earth palms. Again, it varies according to the particular style of martial arts you may study. But again, the beauty of this, again, is that movable arm. Most times, you have a bag that was static in place, and you have to do all the moving, which is fine. But I also want that arm to be moving, just like a real person's arm is going to move. And I want to be able to move to the inside and the outside, to the left and to the right. I want to have some fun with this. That's the key. And, um, you know, another drill we'll use is uh, utilizing an upside-down palm, okay? Uh, people sometimes will call this a monkey paw. But originally, it's an inverted slap. So I'm going to slap from here, strike. 
Slap from here, hand. Back from here, from here. Slap the arm, slap the head. Slap the hand, 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 slap the head. I can make it a back fist just as easily. And now I'm learning to move over three quarters around. I can just as easily incorporate this with a heel palm to the rib cage. I'm working inside and outside, working that hooking parry. I can just easily hook the heel palm above. And again, getting that moving drill. I can also work a lot of my traditional Kempo techniques. Lock in, lock in, back to knuckle, elbow. Lock in, back to knuckle, elbow. Lock in, back to knuckle, elbow, hammer fist. Lock in, back to knuckle, elbow, hammer fist. I can do all these different actions inside. As the arm moves, I can go from side to side. Great drills. Great device, great apparatus. So again, utilizing that armature. Hooking, sandwiching, back fist on the way out. I can do techniques like snapping twig from a Mr. Parker system. Snap, hook, chop, hammer, sandwich elbow, hit, hook, hammer, boom, back fist if I want to. I can take all these different drills, working to the inside and outside. I can incorporate this with kicks, hit, check punch. All these different drills as I move this armature out of harm's way. my various blocks. And incorporating these various drills. So there's a good way that you can take a bag that might not be as stable as you wanted it to be and make it far more mobile. Take one of these basic apparatuses like the strong arm to give you that armature to move that arm around. And the beauty of it, you can set up for different heights. You can set up for a lower line body punch down here. You can bring it up for a, a face punch up here and still be able to work your drills. That's the beauty of it. It is the joy of the mobility from the stability that enables us to increase our ability. Well, that's my name's Joe Rebello, and we're going to be back with some exciting more martial arts action in just a moment. Okay, we've been doing some great drills with our single arm. Hey, you know what's better than one arm? Two. You know what's better than one armature? Two. And this is the uh, strong arm two from uh, Asian World. And now we have two arms that we deal with. And again, we're gonna go through the same procedure we did before. Hi. Take that strap, wrap it across the back of the apparatus, slide it on, attach the Velcro in the back, Take the lower arm, take the lower strap, strap that on. Very nice. Now, hey, again, it circles, it turns, it moves. Uh, I really want to give some credit right now to uh, Mr. Frank Trejo from the American Kempo System. He's one of, one of my instructors. And uh, again, he was the person who enlightened me to this regarding Kempo sticky hands. And having also worked with the Wing Chun system, I can appreciate the terminology he's referring to. In Wing Chun, we have sticky hands, where we have an adhering energy, where our hands keep in touch with our opponent's hands, moving, flowing, striking. And now, you can see, with two arms, I can work that with one arm or two arms. And again, I'm not doing a traditional Wing Chun, you know, Chi Sao drill. But it is giving me insights into how to move my arm in relation to my opponent's arms and move them. Now, he gave a series of beautiful drills that we learned 
in American Kempo techniques, like a technique called reversing mace, another one called lone kimono. And I can now move this arm and work a lot of the various drills that I've learned in various Kempo systems, not only against a single arm, but now two arms. So now I can work to the outside of a right, I can work to the inside of a right. I can work to the inside of a left. I can work to the outside of a left. I can work on top of a left. I can hook and I can work on top of a right. I can work to the inside of two arms. I can work um, coming down and up. I can work to the inside of two arms coming around and down. I can work to the inside of both arms working from the outside in or the inside out. I can come above, below to, to above or above to below. That's what's great about it. So a lot of the drills from various martial arts, uh, specifically Kempo systems, as well as many of the Kung Fu styles can be easily applied to these actions. It's not, and again, it's not limiting it to those styles alone, but we're just giving and citing examples of which we can flow and grow. So now I want to do that drill I did earlier, brush hold strike from the Filipino martial arts. Brush hold strike, and go this arm immediately, brush hold strike, and go this arm immediately, brush hold strike. And I'm going to go back along here, and I'm going to go to this arm. And I'm going to work it to the outside of a right, to the inside of a right, to the inside of a left, to the outside of a left, to the inside of a left, to the inside of a right, to the outside of a right. I could take that other drill I learned earlier, hubit lubit. Check, push, punch. Check, push, punch. Check, push, punch. Check, push, punch. And I can move these arms. I can move them around. That's the beauty of this. So again, I was dealing with a single arm, now I can deal with two. And I can adjust them to whatever according heights I want to do. Now I can utilize a bunch of the different drills I've learned from Wing Chun Assistance. I can do double strike down, heel palm. Double strike up, heel palm underneath. So I'll strike them up, heel palm underneath, strike down, heel palm on, the, on top. I can also work various techniques that I've learned. Uh, again, immediately comes to mind with Kempo, one technique is begging hands. The back, kick. Now I'm doing it above because I can because it's a bag. I can work it above the arm, below the arm. That's the beauty of it. I can adjust these two armatures higher or lower depending what given targets that I want to strike. That's the beauty of what we do. Again, I can also work with both hands. Again, we have a technique called parting wings. Stepping back block, chop them in the knees, chop above, check the arm, punch. Wow, that works out great. And I can work it against both arms. I have another technique called hooking wings. I can step back, I can hook, I can kick, hammer fist, back knuckle, upward elbow, claw, rip, and again, two arms. And again, mobility. I can move this all over the place. So maybe I'm working with a partner, and I do the technique a couple times, and I slide it over to him to work on it. And then he slides it back to me, and I can do the technique. And I slide it back to him. And I can bring it over, I can have a third person over here, and slide it over to them, and they can slide it back to me. Wow, the possibilities are endless. If, I, if that person's over there, and they're working this technique, if there's a fourth person, they can slide it over to them and they can work the technique as well. That's what's great about this particular apparatus and taking what may seem a problem with this bag and making it into a positive aspect and giving you a new and innovative way that you can utilize these bags. Pretty good idea to me. And that's what I really like about this. This is your ability to move. And it's very important, especially as an instructor, I want my students to move. Not like it's static objects, but mobile, moving things. It gives that whole new level of understanding. Um, I'm reminded of a, a classic film from a, a while back, one of Jackie Chan's films, one of his American uh, projects, which was called The Battle Creek Brawl, which was later renamed The Big Brawl. And if you get a chance to see it, there's a wonderful scene with him and his instructor portrayed by Mako, where he has this wonderful apparatus of spinning armatures, and it, you know, every time he thinks he's blocked, it spins around, hits him with one of the other limbs. But it really gives that understanding of the unpredictability of different angles. Of course, everything becomes predictable after a while, but initially, it's a pretty exciting device to watch those arms move around and have to worry and deal with them. Now, again, I don't know what I'm going to do as I'm moving with this drill. It's spontaneous. If it's away, I'm going to pull it toward me. Again, lower limbs, blocking down here. Again, block, prep, boom. Prepping here, circling here, punching here, straight, boom, boom. I'm working according to where the flow of the bag takes me. That's the beauty of it. So that's going from one arm to two, 
Gee, I wonder what would happen if I strapped on that single arm above or below. Wow, a whole new level of understanding and techniques can be given to me. That's the beauty of this. I can put the single arm above the double arms, or I can put the double arms above the single arm, whichever way that you feel comfortable with your given drills. I can put them offset. I can put the one arm in the back and the double arm in the front, so if I spin it one way, that other arm will come in and attack me, depending how much flexibility and give there is. And simply stated, how hard do you push the bag? How hard do you block or strike that bag? That's the key. So there's some ideas to work with. Have some fun with this. Enjoy yourself. That's what makes it fun. That's what gives a new level of unpredictability. That's what gives a new understanding of uh, ability and innovation in relationship to your given technique within your given style or styles. That being said, this is Joe Rebella, and we'll be back with more exciting action here on Rebella's Kemper Karate. Welcome, everyone. Uh, in closing, I, I want to make a couple of announcements uh, as, we, as we go to, uh, to air. Uh, you will probably be seeing this in some of our, our systems in the beginning of January in 2014. I really shouldn't date this, but uh, you know, you, you know, you know. Uh, the reason I mention that is because in the last few weeks, it's been a really difficult time for me. Uh, several individuals who were very close to me have passed away, and I want to give a moment and, and uh, say thank you to them. Uh, first and notably, uh, C. Joe, uh, Victor Sonny Gascon, against, uh, a lot of people knew him in Hawaii as Sonny Gas, who was the founder of the Karazempo Goshen Jutsu System, which is the mother art for many of the popular Kempo systems in New England. Uh, from C. Joe Gascon's training to George Passari in Rhode Island, from George Passari to Professor Nick Sirio in Rhode Island, to Fred Villari, uh, again, on down through his particular lineage, Anyone from those three particular lineages really have uh, Victor Gascon to thank for him bringing the art to the United States. Again, he, of course, trained originally with uh, Adriano Imperato in the Kaju Kempo system and then broke away to formulate what became known as Kata Zempo Goshen Jutsu. Uh, also, I would like to pass along my condolences, and uh, another good friend of mine that I've lost is uh, Richie Brandon. Richard Brandon, a lot of people knew through the New England martial arts scene. Uh, some of you who may have watched the old WMAC Masters TV series uh, may know him as Yin Yang Man. Uh, he was a very prolific Chinese martial artist in the arts of Kung Fu and Wushu. Uh, he was featured in everything from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as one of the putties to even doubling for many of the actual stars of the show to working on everything from Mortal Kombat Conquest TV series, uh, even in the music video The Blade featuring Jay Cho, which may, some of you may know from his role as Kato in the uh, remake of The Green Hornet with Seth Rogen. Uh, Richie was a good personal friend of mine. Uh, he lived in Lynn, Massachusetts, and as a fellow Massachusetts resident martial artist, I used to have to compete against him in the crane circuit uh, in the uh, 1980s and 90s, and uh, he would be sorely missed. And uh, last but not least, uh, Tom Lotlin, uh, the star of the classic Billy Jack film, he passed away at the ripe young age of uh, 82, led a full life, was a, a cancer survivor, and uh, I um, was very fortunate that he was one of the people who influenced me in my martial arts training and uh, in his study of Hapkido and also including his instructor Bong Su Han in the classic film The Trial of Billy Jack. And uh, I'm very fortunate to have seen these individuals and many times met individuals such as Cedro Gascon, Richard Brandon, and even Tom Lawton. So uh, again, I just want to pass along my, my thanks to those individuals, and uh, I hope you're enjoying our show. Uh, it's been several years that we've been on, and um, I hope that you're getting more out of your martial arts training here at Rebello's Camp of Karate. Until next time, this is Joe Rebello, and uh, keep training.
food is attractive, steady, clever, elegant, powerful. It is a foundation of Chinese culture, inherited from our ancestors. Like tigers, they are a treasure of our world. We must pass these treasures to our children. Please do not buy or use any tiger products. Together, let's stop the trade in tiger forever. When the buying stops, the killing can too. If you're buying rhino horn, you may be paying for more than just horn. You're paying for guns. Bullets. Poison arrows. Chainsaw. Axes and machetes to hack off the face of the rhino. And you are paying for the life of a beautiful creature. So please tell your friends and relatives, never buy products made from rhino horn. When the buying stops, the killing can too. We are the money went to my head. We are the money went to my head.